Okay, so now I'm going to, here she is, going to mix up some flesh color for her. So I'm using a lot of this Titan Buff, a little bit of the Burnt Umber. This is again just going to be kind of like a mixture of, of everything, of all the colors to get what I'm, the color that I like. Just give her some rosiness. I always do pretty yellow skin tones. I have a, a really olive skin tone. So a lot of times I will even test it on myself and make sure they're my babies and have my skin tone. So that's another funny little thing that I do. And from doing that, from the experience of painting on myself, I know that my skin tone is really yellow. So, I use a lot of yellow. Some skin tones are more uh, pinky or, or lighter colored and maybe even have some bluer tones in them. Uh, more fair complexions will show more of the, you know, blue through like veining. So, that's something else that you can do if you want. So that's about where I'm going to stay for now. So I'm going to have some very, very lights and some medium color and then some darker color here for my skin tone. So now getting my funny little green, purple, and blue girl, I'm going to do some more human color on her. All this other stuff on the palette is pretty dry now so I can just paint all over again just a pretty dry brush I don't use a lot of paint loaded up on the brush and I'm gonna do that dry brush technique again just going over those colors that are now dry also so it's not gonna blend with it really it's going to uh, well the edges will blend but it will give me a nice good coverage over most of this. And I start with the darker colors and then I will move in with the lights in the raised areas to tone it down. And I stay with a really nice light touch on her. See, she's starting to almost look human already. Oh gosh, my voice, you guys. I sound so bad. I don't feel bad. I'm not sick or anything. Well, I was sick, but I'm not sick anymore. This is just this residual um, raspiness. And um sounds like I am a smoker or, you know, I don't know. Sounds like I have a problem for sure. But I feel fine. I don't really feel sick at all. I just sound really bad. Yeah, so you see how we're getting that all covered up now? Leaving just the shadows that are in all the wild colors. So remember, indentations darker, and the raised parts, raised and rounded parts are lighter. I just kind of say this whenever I'm painting that like one tip was so, has been so helpful for me. Raised and rounded are the highlights. Indentations are the lowlights. And then leaving some of those, uh, some of those really wild colors, it just gives it a, it's a little artistic flair that gets left on it that I really enjoy. I do a lot of fantasy art, like fairies and mermaids. I'll show you a mermaid in a little bit. But, um, so that element of whimsy 
and fantasy color really appeals to me. Especially when I get into the the more shadowy areas, I'll use darker colors. So I'm using some of the more of the burnt umber, the darker color around the back and around the edges of her neck here. And this is just again like more layers, layers and layers and layers of colors. I typically will do the darker colors first and the wild colors first, really, um, and then go with the lighter colors after that. And that's just been part of my practice for a lot of years now. It's actually how I do my own makeup, too. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but... When I'm doing my own makeup, I will usually do the like the lighter part of the highlights at the end to really bring things up and make them pop. So you see how you can still see the shadowy colors, even though I've pretty much covered her up mostly with uh I'm trying to get you to be able to see her better and still be able to see her myself so she's looking pretty human now the eyes are a you know kind of a funky thing when you don't have eyes painted in but i wait until later because if i do it now i'm just going to paint over it and mess it up anyway Yeah. I'm going to give my voice a rest for a few moments and just let you watch. <sighs> Doing some blending and smoothing with a little water. Not too much. Actually, that's one of the things that... Uh, that's actually the reason why I repainted her with the gesso was because I used too much water and it was too blended. And I, I don't like it to be too blended. I actually like the kind of weird patchy look. It's just my my own aesthetic that I appreciate. So. Alrighty then. There's that. I'm going to set her aside for a moment. And I'm going to show you one of my mermaids. So this is Beach Ball Babylon, just a little tiny mermaid sculpture that I did. I gave her some, uh, what are they called? Pasties. I gave her some seasonal pasties to not offend anyone's, you know, gentle sensibilities. Not that anyone has ever complained. I've, I've had her on this blog before, but so you can see her face. So this is what we're going for. Kind of, so see, she kind of matches my complexion almost depending upon what part of my body I guess I know for sure I used myself when I was painting her skin tone and I painted on myself so she's real close to my skin tone and but you see the shading around her eyes around her mouth around the hairline so you have the crazy colors under there and in different light you can see it more also I don't know if the camera picks it up but, so that's what we're going for. That is ultimately once all of the flesh tone is done and it gets more blended together, that's, that's the look that we're going for. So this is Beach Ball Babylon. My mermaid on a beach ball, mermaid on a beach ball. She sits on a beach ball. She's my totem kind of, uh, um, she's kind of my self-portrait. They're all my self-portraits, but she's really my self-portrait. So, there's that. Bye! <clears throat> oh.
Alrighty then. I think I'm going to let her dry a little bit more and then we will come back and do some blush on her cheeks, fill in her lips and her eyes so she's not looking so scary and also some highlights. So we'll be back. 